Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. If you use an application like Affinity Photo, On One Photo Raw, Exposure X4, or Photoshop, or really any application that uses blend modes, in this video, I'm going to do my best to try to explain the differences between all the different blend modes. All right, thank you very much for tuning in. Now I must confess that this is gonna get confusing. So what I did is I made a cheat sheet and I'm actually gonna be reading from this cheat sheet. It's just a PDF of all the different blend modes and you're welcome to download it. In the description below this video, there'll be a link for you to download it. I encourage you to download it because it will help because it is gonna get confusing as I try to explain what all these different blend modes do. Now. I have two layers here. I called one top layer, and that is simply the layer with the tiger. But to it, I added a square white swatch and a square 50% gray swatch. Below that, I have what I'm calling the base layer. The base layer is just an onion skin background, but to that, I added a white circle, a 50% gray circle, and a black circle. All these uh, different circles and squares will help us demonstrate how the blend modes actually blend. Now, when we go to the drop down and we click on the blend mode, you can see they're divided up into several sections. The top section is just called the normal section, and there's no blending done with these two blend modes. You really have to move the opacity slider to make anything happen. Below that is called the darken section. All these blend modes tend to darken the image. Now below that is the opposite of the darken section. This is the lighten section, and these blend modes will tend to lighten the image. And each one in order is kind of the opposite of its counterpart in the darken section. So lighten is the opposite of darken. Screen is the opposite of multiply. Color dodge is the opposite of color burn and so on. And we'll talk about more, talk about that more in a moment. Below that is the contrast section. And you can see that these tend to add contrast to your image. And what these actually do is they take one element from the lighten section and one element from the darken section and combine them to come up with these blend modes. Below that is the comparative section. These do some odd things where it compares different parts of the top layer and the bottom layer to come up with a blend. And below that is the color section, and this will really affect color mainly. And we're gonna start right at the top with the normal section. Again, I'm just gonna remind you, go in the description below the video, there'll be a link to download these notes. They'll help a lot. So it's, start, it's gonna start getting confusing. Now, I mentioned that the normal section, there's no real blending occurring here. You can see it's just the top layer is totally obscuring that bottom layer. You have to go to the opacity slider and bring opacity down. And when you're in normal mode, it will just fade out the top layer until the bottom layer starts coming through. When you go to dissolve mode, instead of fading out the layer, it dithers away the layer. And you can see, does a different effect. So it just dithers away the layer. That's why it's called dissolve. It looks like it's dissolving that top layer. So that's simple. But next it starts to get a little hairy. We'll go to this darken section and the first blend mode is darken. And with darken, any pixels that are darker on the base layer will replace any lighter pixels on the top layer. So you can see that um, nothing is darker in the base layer than the black I have on the top layer. So none of the black is getting replaced, but there are some parts of the top layer that are lighter. For example, uh, this white square is lighter and this gray square is lighter than the corresponding pixels on the bottom layer. So those are getting replaced and you can see it's a straight replacement and so on when you look through. And of course then the black on the bottom layer, the base layer, this black circle is darker than every pixel above it, so it replaces that as well. So you can see how that blends. That's darken. Now multiply. Every color is darkened except white. So before, with darken, you may remember this 50% gray square right here. That color just got replaced straight out with the, uh, the onion skin below it. Didn't affect the luminosity of it at all. 
But with multiply, you'll see it gets darker. So it's making everything darker, basically everything darker except white. And that, so that white square up there just is a straight replacement still. Next is color burn. Darkens the base color and the top color, blends them together to produce a darker, more saturated result. And so you can see it's, it's definitely darker, uh, but wherever white is, if white is on the top layer, it will just take the pixels from the bottom layer and do a straight replacement. It doesn't make them darker or lighter. If white is on the base layer, it will just auto replace the top pixels, period. Just like that. So that is a little odd. Now, linear burn, on the other hand, if we go to that, you'll notice the white circle went away. This decreases the brightness of the base color, except when blended with white. So basically, um, when blended with white on the top layer, this squatch here, or swatch, squatch, it got, you could see, just a kind of a straight replacement. But the white and the base layer didn't come through. It's totally ignored. So that's linear burn. Next is darker color. The darker base layer pixels come through displayed unaltered. So you could see again, we have this white square on the top layer and the gray square on the top layer. And when I use the darker color blend mode, those just get replaced with the pixels below it. Similarly on the tiger, wherever the pixel below it is darker, it just gets replaced. And then of course on the bottom layer, that base layer, we have this black circle and that comes through unaltered. So this is the darker, the darkened section, the entire darkened section. Now I meant to mention that the next section is kind of the opposite of that. So you're going to see opposite effects happening. When I go to lighten, it's the opposite of darken. Any pixels lighter on the base layer replace darker pixels on the top layer. So you could see that the white circle and the 50% gray circle are lighter than the black, so those just replace. And you can see that the, uh, the onion skin down here is darker than the 50% gray square and the white square, so those don't get replaced, those stay there. And then whereas the black circle is on the base layer, um, the top layer has part of it that is darker, the black stripes, or they're equal, the black stripes of the tiger, so that allows the black circle to come through. But where the lighter parts of the tiger are, those stay. So it's, you know, that's pretty much what lighten does, opposite of darken. Now screen is the opposite of multiply. This is as though you took multiple exposures on the same frame. So it's kind of like you were shooting film and you took a photo of the tiger, then you went around and took a photo of the onion skin background on the same frame of film, and it just kind of blends them together, just like that, and that's really all screen does. Below that is color dodge. It's, color dodge is the opposite of color burn. The base uh, color, the color in the base layer, influences the top layer and black is ignored. So you could see that wherever um, black is on the top layer, it just goes away and gets replaced with the bottom layer. And that's the blend you get in the black. These three uh, colors, white, 50% gray and black come all the way through to the top layer. So it's really favors the bottom layer, uh, gets kind of more, uh, more uh, of it is applied to the blend uh, with color dodge. Next is linear, linear dodge. This is the opposite of linear burn. It increases the brightness. Blending with black produces no change. So again, with this one, we have black on the top layer. So when you're blending with black, there's no change. It just allows the onion skin background, the white and the gray to come through. So if you have black on the top blend layer, then that black's going to go away, basically. And it's going to allow the base layer to come through unaltered. And you can see what it does then where you have white and 50% gray on the top layer. Uh, white doesn't do anything. 50% gray allows some of that background to come through, but it lightens it. And it allows some of that black circle to come through, but it again lightens it and allows the 
uh, more of like the tiger to show through uh, there. So that's linear dodge. Lighter color. It's the opposite of darker color. The lightest base pixels display unaltered. So if you have a lighter pixel on the base, it's just going to come through unaltered. And you can see it does. Uh, we're at the top where all this black is. Uh, everything below that is darker, so that comes through unaltered. But the white and the gray are lighter, so those stay. Those aren't getting changed. And then with the tiger and the more complex pixel arrangement of the tiger itself, you could see what happens over there. So that is the entire uh, lighten section. Okay, next we go to the contrast section, and the first one is overlay. Overlay is probably one of the more popular blend modes we use. If colors on the top layer are darker than the base layer, they are multiplied. If they are lighter, they are screened. Blending with 50% gray produces no change. So this takes part of the darken section that is multiply from the darken section and screen from the lighten section to come up with this effect. And wherever there is 50% gray, there is no change. So this is 50% gray on the top layer. And you can see that the bottom onion skin comes through unchanged where there is 50% gray. Then you could see up here where there was white, the onion skin comes through and gets lightened a little bit. So the lighter color gets lightened. Then we have the white comes through unaltered, the black comes through unaltered, and you can see what it does for the less. So that's overlay mode. Soft light mode. If colors on the top layer are darker than the base layer, they are darkened. If they are lighter, they are lightened. Blending with 50% gray produces no change. Because soft light uses darken and lighten, instead of multiply and screen, soft light has less contrast than overlay. So soft light is less contrasty than overlay. And you can see there, it's, it's similar though. It's doing similar effects, but instead of using multiply and screen, it's using darken and lighten. Next is hard light. If the top lighter pixels are darker than 50% gray, they multiply. If lighter than 50% gray, they screen. So it's using multiply and screen again, and you can see the effect it does. It um, kind of enriches the contrast and the color when it does. And you can see that uh, white stays. 50% gray allows the onion skin to come through. Where it's black, uh, stays black, nothing comes through. And then where it's darker on the bottom layer, which is where this black circle comes through, that will come through mostly except where it's lighter on the uh, tiger, for instance. You can see some of those light, uh, uh, some of that lighter fur is coming through, I should say. So that is hard light. Next is vivid light. It works like hard light, but uses color burn and color dodge instead of multiply and screen. It produces a higher contrast image than hard light. And you can see, so it's very similar to hard light, but just more contrast. Below that is linear light. If the top layer pixel is lighter than 50% gray, the result is dodged by increasing brightness. If the top layer pixel is darker than 50% gray, the result is burned and brightness is reduced. So you can see we get this really high contrast image. And wherever there is white on the top layer, it doesn't get blended at all with the bottom layer. Wherever there is 50% gray on the top layer, it just allows that bottom layer to come through without any changes in contrast and brightness or anything like that. It just comes right through. And then as far as the bottom layers are concerned, when the top layer has darker pixels, nothing gets blended. So this white circle and gray circle on the bottom layer don't get blended at all. But the black circle on the bottom layer, some of it gets blended with some of the darker uh, pieces of fur on the tiger. And the lighter pieces of fur don't get blended or they come through a little bit more apparently. Um, next is pin light. When the colors are 50% gray on the top layer, the base layer shows through. Lighter or darker than 50% gray will display the top layer with the bottom layer color. So, where there is 50% gray right here on the top layer, and you use pin light, that bottom layer comes through unchanged. 
wherever it's lighter or darker than that, then it allows that that base layer to come through. So you could see that where the fur was on the uh, tiger, you could see we have actual onion skin background. And you could see how it does the effect. So uh, pin light is kind of uh, interesting blend mode. Next is hard mix. It reduces the image to primary and secondary colors, red, green, blue, cyan, yellow, magenta, white, and black to produce a posterizing effect. And you can see that's the posterized image. So that really is everything or all the blend modes in the contrast section. Now, next is the comparative section. You can see the first one is called difference. The lightest colors are subtracted from the darkest colors. White on the top layer inverts the bottom layer color and produces no change. And black produces no change. Uh, this is also called are often called the psychedelic blend mode. So you can see how you kind of get these psychedelic colors. And wherever there is white, it inverts the color of the base color. So there's white in that top square right there. So it inverts this color and comes up with that color. And you can see how it kind of shifts colors, inverts colors, and does kind of crazy stuff. Uh, the Blend modes in the comparative section aren't often used. Uh, so, uh, exclusion. It's similar to difference, modes, difference mode, but with less saturation and luminance. And you can see it's just not as saturated and not as uh, luminance, luminosity values are reduced compared to difference. Next is subtract. It subtracts the top color from the base color, results in a darker image. And you can see that. Next is divide. Divide divides the top color from the base color and it results in a lighter image. So that's everything in the comparative section. And finally, we wrap it up with the color section. And U, you can see that kind of cool effect there. It blends the U of the top layer with the saturation of luminance of the bottom layer. And by the way, when you have the luminance value, that's really the detail. So you can see the detail of that onion skin is coming through, but it gets blended with the U of the top layer, and that's how we get that effect. Next is saturation. It blends the saturation of the top layer with the U and luminosity of the bottom layer. So that's very uh, similar to U. But you can see the effect is, is slightly different there. Next is color. It blends the U of the top layer with the image detail or luminosity of the bottom layer. So that is color. And again, that very similar. All these are kind of be, being similar to each other. And finally, luminosity. And you can see that that now is different. It's the opposite of color, the previous, previous blend mode I showed. Luminosity blends the U of the bottom layer with the image detail or luminosity of the top layer. So it's taking basically the onion skin, where the onion skin is, the U there, and it's applying it to the top layer. And you can see how it comes through. Now white on the top layer has no effect. So you can see it's not doing anything with white. 50% gray though has the U of the bottom layer come through. And where it's black on the bottom layer, it just comes through and makes a black and white image up top because it's taking that hue, which is black, and essentially when it gets blended, it becomes gray. So that's really all the blend modes. And, I, and I, again, I apologize. I know it's kind of confusing because I'm trying to read my notes and look at what I'm doing. And that's why I encourage you, just download this, these notes. I mean, they're, they're free. Just download them. And I think they'll help you um, better understand what blend modes do. And again, it's even though I did the demonstration in Photoshop, it works for any, any application that uses blend modes. They work like this. So thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.